Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video tutorial on computer graphics. This is Jade Rahman from Axiom Soft. This is probably your third or fourth video tutorial dealing with rasterization. Now if you haven't watched my earlier videos on rasterization, I recommend you to do so. In the last video, I discussed about the basic incremental algorithm and today we'll be looking into another algorithm called the midpoint line algorithm. So once again, we assume that we're given a line starting from x0, y0 all the way to x and y n, and we have to produce this line on the computer screen using the pixel grid. Okay? So, once again, we assume that we're given an integer grid. This is our integer grid. Okay? And the pixels are disjoint, and our slope is less than or equals to 1. Now, suppose we've currently chosen a pixel xb. And we've glued this pixel, okay? So let's denote the pixel to the right of it as E or each pixel, and the pixel to the diagonally upwards as the northeast pixel NE, okay? Now, if the slope is less than or equal to 1, the line will always pass between the E pixel and the NE pixel, and the M is the midpoint between E and any. Now suppose that our line has struck the line connecting E and any at point Q. So what we do is we measure the distance, the vertical distance of Q from E to any, and we select the pixel which has the least distance from Q. That is to say, we can also use the midpoint to determine this answer. If the midpoint is above the point Q from our perspective, as you can see right now, we choose E. If the midpoint is below the point Q, then we choose pixel any. If the midpoint is exactly on point Q, then of course we can choose either one, but by default E is chosen. Now we all know the equation of a line is given by ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, c are the coefficients. If we write it as a function, we can write it as a function of f of x, y equals to this equation. Now we also know that the equation of a line in slope intercept form can be given by y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope. Now n can be given by dy by dx, where dy is equal to yn minus y0 and dx is equal to xn minus x0. So, solving this equation gives us dy into x minus dx into y plus b dx equals 0. Now, comparing this equation with this one, we have a equals dy, b equals minus dx, and c equals b dx. Okay? So the function becomes f of xy equals dy into x minus dx into y plus b dx which is zero for all points x, y, which are on the line joining x0, y0, and xn, yn. Okay? Of course, the first and last pixel, the x0, y0, and the xn, yn pixel, will always be glowed. So for those two pixels, f of x0, y0, and f of xn, yn is always zero, because they're always on the line. Let me get rid of all this, so we can have a, excuse me, oops, uh, we can have a better work place to work with, and let's go, this needs to go as well, and this needs to go. Okay, so, like I was saying, XP, YP have been selected pixel, so the midpoint between the next E and any pixel is given by M which we can write as xp 
plus 1, yp plus half. Because it goes 1 pixel width to the right and goes half pixel width along y direction upwards. Okay? So that's where this comes from. So that's clear. Now, for the midpoint criterion, we have to find the value of fm, which is, as we know, given by f of xp plus 1, yp plus half. Since our decision is based on this value, we define this to be a variable d equals f of xp plus 1, yp plus half. Okay? Now, if d is greater than zero, then that means we choose the pixel n e. Okay? Because that way d greater than zero means our line is closer to the pixel n e than to pixel e. Otherwise, we choose pixel e. Alright? Now let's just put an equal sign there as well. So by default we choose e. Now, if the pixel E is chosen, then where would our midpoint be next? Our midpoint would be right here, at the next midpoint, okay? Then we will become D nu equals to F of XP plus 2 and YP plus half with respect to XP, YP. Okay, see, it goes two pixels along this direction and half along this direction. Okay, now the difference between these two d's, d new minus d old, would be f of xp plus one, yp plus half. Minus, oh, excuse me, that's xp plus 2, yp plus half, minus f of xp plus 1, and yp plus half. Okay? Now, if we substitute these values into the actual function, that is to say, it becomes a xp plus 2 plus b yp plus half plus c minus a xp plus 1 minus b whoops yp plus 2 excuse me I mean yp plus half minus c and this gives us equals to nothing but a so d new is nothing but d old plus a. With me so far? Okay. Now, if the northeast point is chosen, in that case, our midpoint is going to be right here. Okay? So that's two pixels to the right from xp, yp and about 3 by 2 pixel upwards, okay? So in that case, let me just write it down here. If, get the black color, if NE is chosen, then our D new would become F of XP plus 2 yp plus 3 by 2. Okay? So once again, we calculate the difference d new minus d old, and this will give us the value a plus b. So in this case, d new is nothing but d old plus a plus b. Okay? And of course, we can calculate the initial d or d start. And no, this is not about the anime initial d, although it's a great anime, by the way. We're all fan. Right. The initial d start will be equal to 
f of x0 plus 1 y0 plus half obviously because x0 y0 is the first pixel will be glowing okay and this gives us a x0 plus 1 plus b y0 plus half plus c okay and that will give us f of x0 y0 plus a plus b by 2 okay I think I skipped a line maybe I should write it down just in case so that you guys can understand it's actually a x0 plus b y0 plus c plus a plus b by 2 so this portion becomes f of x0 y0 and as we all know f of x0 y0 is 0 why? Because x0, y0 is a pixel that's on the line. So, d star is nothing but a plus b by 2. Okay? Or, we can write this as dy plus dx by 2. Oh, excuse me, I think there was a minus for dx. Yeah, b was equal to minus dx. Okay? So, in order to avoid this fractional point, see, the fractional point, we multiply both sides by 2, and that gives us 2d star equals dy, excuse me, twice dy, damn it, hold on kids, I'm not as clumsy, I promise you, twice dy minus dx. Okay, we can just simply leave this 2 out of the equation because multiplication or division by 2 or any other integer or any other number doesn't really affect our choice because it doesn't change the greater than sign or the less than sign. It has no effect on the logical operators such as the greater than or the less than sign. Okay, alright. If d is greater than 0, then dy2 will also be greater than 0 and d multiplied by 2 will also be greater than 0. So it has absolutely no effect on our decision making. Okay, so now that we have to multiply the values of d start by 2, we have to make some changes in the equations above as well. For instance, if we chose so e, we had our difference between d new and d old to be equal to a. Now this will have to become twice since we multiply d star by 2. Okay? Or we can write it as twice dy. Similarly, when we chose pixel any, we have the difference to be a plus b, which will have to become 2 into a plus b. And this gives us 2 into dy minus dx. So, we know what to do in a line drawing using the midpoint line drawing algorithm. We have to calculate our d values. If the value of d is greater than 0, we choose an e. If the value of d is less or equal to 0, we choose e. Okay? And we know that if we choose e, the value of d will be incremented by twice dy. If we choose any, our value of d will be incremented by 2 into dy minus dx. And of course, we have the initial d start to be equal to twice dy minus dx. And of course, the value of dy and dx can easily be calculated from the two endpoints, x0, y0, and x and yn. And that's basically how this algorithm works. Well, that's it, guys. That concludes our discussion of the midpoint line algorithm. I'll give you a simulation, an uh, actual demonstration in the next video. So until then, that's it. And I hope to see you in the next video.